Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and on today's video I have pulled out this collection of blue plaid flannel by Robert Kaufman. This is Man Mammoth Flannel Blue Color Story Fat Quarters from robertkaufman.com and they are so stunningly gorgeous. I love every single one. This one's really just a solid blue but I love the color and I'm gonna make a quilt out of this blue plaid flannel. Actually, I plan to make kind of like two quilt tops. I have a big plan. First of all, I also have, this is from my own stash. This is from leftover other projects and it's been cut up from t-shirts and I like it too, so it's gonna get included. This is probably enough, but I'm a little worried about like, for example, this one's a little, got too much red in it. So I may not include that one. This one has a little bit of red and I'm okay with that. But I like all of these, too. Except maybe this. This is more like a gingham, actually. I mean, I include this gingham. And then this is houndstooth. I don't think the houndstooth would be stunning. It is flannel material, but matter of fact, I will include that one. But I won't include the houndstooth. So I have two ideas for flannel quilts. The one is to make this blue one. They're all blue, so it should all look good. The other idea is this is the rest of my flannel stash. I've pulled out the blue from out of it to use for this. These colors are all browns and like greens and this is black and white and other stuff. I don't know that they would make a stunning quilt, but I want to try. And even if it's not stunning, we'll say that's the back of the quilt. It's going to be two sided or a good side and an ugly side. I personally don't mind an ugly quilt. I like an ugly quilt. Who doesn't love an ugly quilt, right? I feel like the ugly quilts get more love than, you know, the the precious ones because you use them as picnic blankets, you take it to the beach, you have it in the back of your car. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna piece. I don't want this project to take forever. It's actually been a minute since I've finished a quilt. You may not know that because the videos keep coming, but I want a project that I can finish and it's this one. So let me get started. Let's just start. There's no strategy. The only thing I wanna make sure I do is that I wanna cut along the actual straight lines of the plaid. I don't want it to be cattywampus. So that's the T for that. How to handle the seams. This flannel's all different thickness. This flannel's all of a similar thickness and it is all quite thick, actually. I almost think we need to iron the seams to open. Well, I'll just play it by ear. I've made improv quilts on this channel before, but basically the strategy is get two pieces that fit together, fit them to a third piece, fit that to another piece, fit it together, sew it up, trim it, you know what I mean? Make, sew blocks into neighborhoods. Sew neighborhoods together. So I'm gonna do it. that pin right into my finger.
So this is how much space we need to fill in. So that was the blue side and now I'm starting the other side and doing that improv piecing is fun but it can also be mentally taxing. So for this side I just decided to cut squares and make a very simple pattern. It's 8 inch squares and 4.5 and inch squares sewn into 8 inch 4 patches and then I sew it all together in a grid. I wouldn't say these colors or patterns are very pretty, but for whatever reason, I'm really digging the aesthetic that's developing here. I feel like it's something that you would find in a treehouse or like a cabin in the woods or something. Even if it's technically ugly, I still dig this vibe. This is how I'm making my quilt sandwich and it's one of my favorite kind of cheating ways to finish a quilt. There's not going to be any binding and I think this method is best for this quilt. I lay the batting down and then I place the blue flimsy right side up on top of the batting and then the other flimsy or what would be the backing goes on top of that right side down. Cut around it perfectly, pin it together and then I sew a quarter inch seam all the way around leaving a small opening to turn it right side out. I fully did not leave a big enough opening. This opening's like 14 inches. That's not big enough. So I'm grabbing the corners, two of them. I mean, I only have two arms, so I can only grab two of the corners. Pull them through the hole. Reach in and pick the corners out. Good. All four of them. Stunning, now let's quilt it. I said the opening was not big enough. Obviously it was big enough because you just saw me turn it right side out with no problems. I think I'm always nervous when I need to turn things right side out that I'm going to rip the edges of the holes. But I do backstitch on either side of the opening to avoid that. And really even if you do rip one of the sides of the opening when you turn it right side out, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because you just sew it back shut. You have to sew it shut eventually anyway.
I finished this quilt by first sewing around the edge with embroidery floss and then I quilted it following the seam lines in the grid side with embroidery floss as well. For the opening, I turned the edges in, wrapping the edges around the edge of the batting to enclose it, and then I used the embroidery floss to sew it shut with a running stitch by the edge of it. That's what worked for this aesthetic. I did not need to bother with a whip stitch or a ladder stitch or anything else. This is the blue side and I guess I do prefer the blue side even though I like both sides. This quilt turned out so soft and drapey and comfy. And then this is the other side and even though it's ugly, I just like it. The lack of balance is so thorough that it comes back around for me. And if you like something that you also think is ugly, is it still considered ugly? I don't know. But I love my flannel quilt and thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and please come again.